Okay, so you and Officer Shooty go onto the property. What do you do when you're onto the property? Do you go into the house? Do you go into the residence, correct? When you go into the residence, what do you initially see? Uh, I saw the gentleman, the deceased, um, laying on the floor. Um, his head was to the west, and uh, his feet was towards the east. And I made contact with the lady inside, but she had to show him as well. And what, what did you determine was the manner of death? I come inside. Okay. And how did you make that determination? Because the injuries was uh, the injuries uh, were done by another person, person or person. You were with each other all day. Yeah, until I was with Greg from like eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning till probably twenty minutes before this incident happened. Okay. Were Were you guys drinking during the day? Yes, we were drinking the whole time. And do you recall, I may have missed it, do you recall when Mr. Stack left? Uh, I couldn't tell you the exact time of day, no, because we were, you know, we were drunk, we were intoxicated. It was maybe, I don't know, maybe four. I, I really don't know. Sometime in the afternoon or early evening? Right. She said she had it off, and she got up and she killed him. You said she had had it off? And did she say how she killed him? She did. All she said was she killed him. So she just had enough. It is going to be up to the jury to figure out what happened. Did this defendant lie uh, to Officer Kingston in order to cover up what happened? Or are the multiple after the fact statements accurate? and or a mere concoction. Those are issues for the jury. Those are not issues for the preliminary examination. Uh, I find that there is probable cause that crime was committed, and there's, there's also is probable cause that defendants committed it. Once again, if there is a self-defense issue, it's something that the jury is going to either have to accept or reject. Defendant will be bound over.